from Larry's first email. Um, and once I go back to those instructions, I can get those those buttons. But in light in um, in the absence of the button being up there, um, you can you can get to uh, the same thing by um, let me figure this out here. Um, oh, why do I? Why? Here they are. It's on a pencil. So the thunderbolts, yeah. the thunderbolts in here somewhere. Right. I don't know which one. Uh, is that it? Uh, yes. Okay. No, that's not. That's not it. What is that? It looks like it. Well, we didn't. So don't you remember the parameters that we set up the other? The last time? No, nope. I forgot. Well, we set them up, and what you just drew is is not the thunderbolt. Um, What's the name? I don't of even it? I don't even see it listed in um, in uh, what you what you've got there. Okay, how do I add? I'm not good at setup. And do we call it a Thunderbolt or an ABCD? I wonder what he calls it. Well, it's it's by picture, so I don't. Um, well, let I don't, me. Would you mind, are you on the right computer for you to share your screen with me? Yes. Okay, maybe that would help. Let me uh, give you permission to do that. You are now co-host, so you can do anything I can do. So just share your screen. There's a... There you go. I start to see it now. Okay. Okay. So one thing that Larry doesn't teach, and I've gone through it, I've gone through stuff with him twice. And Larry says, Tim, you're doing everything exactly right. And just keep doing what you're doing. Don't let anybody tell you you're not doing it right. So um with that um there's as i see it there's two ground rules when you decide to attach a thunderbolt to something and larry doesn't specifically teach it as as i but i but i figured it out kind of from watching him a little bit but mostly from me looking at it and doing what we did last time in the gold. And so I'm going to go over to the, um, I'm going to go over to uh, um, crude oil, like you had up and, um, and just share something with you um, um, about, about the, about the crude oil. And I'm, I would be willing to just kind of tear my chart apart. And so what our, what, what grouping did you, what, what chart did you have up on crew? I Daily, don't think, I don't think it's, hour. I don't think it's right because uh, the price here, I mean, in other words, I'm not getting data for that one. I'm probably getting data for the S and P, but neither one of us trade that much. So um, I, I connected one or two things and then I quit connecting. You know how with Ninja Trader, you have to go to each individual instrument and have the chart project data into Ensign. So you have to have both. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I don't know how, I don't have, I don't know how to help you with that. I just pay for data. I right. pay for three data sources. And so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm I'm running about two thousand dollars a month overhead before I make any money. Uh oh, yeah, I've heard that before. It makes me uh, 
but right. next week. But so the general rule, and it doesn't really matter if it, if it's an old chart or it's a it's a new chart or it's an up to the date chart. Um, first of all, you had everything scrunched down um, so narrow you couldn't see any price movements. So let's just make this chart bigger here, and I'll. I'll, um, I'll step through with you without tearing my chart apart. I'm just gonna, uh, let me see how, what, what I wanna do here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just tear it apart. Can you, and, wait, can you create a new chart and not disturb your good chart? No, not really. Um, if I don't have anything, I could do it on the four hour chart because I don't ever watch that. Um, I begin, I'm, I'm understanding how to watch it for a reason that we, we don't need to share with you. But so in order to draw a thunderbolt, I mean, you, you, as I see it, you can't just start drawing a thunderbolt. In other words, you say, well, I think we should go from this low up to here and down to here and see what we got. As I would see it, that's an illegitimate thunderbolt. Okay. It's connected a high and it's connected a low. Why? What makes it not legitimate? And so here's the concept. If you're going to use the ABC equals D, and this is why he's got you drawing, drawing um, triangles, because here's a triangle. One, here here and here okay so what he's all and then he's in here's another triangle i'm not going to draw these lines in because it take more time than than it's worth as far as i can see and then there's other triangles here but but the point that i want to make with you is that once you once you find a low in a market and we could go back over here and, and find the high and, and bring it down. But in order to, the legitimacy of a thunderbolt is that number one, when doing a retracement level, the retracement window falls here or here. The 50% is sometimes what what it were where it is at but this becomes a legitimate thunderbolt to look at in the market because you have a b and c is pulling into basically the 618 yeah the most important fibonacci numbers in the in the in the in the a b equals c d is 618 and 382. Now, sometimes the 382, the market will, um, Dan called it lost motion. And he equated it to an, an engine in the car. Your engine in the car has to have a certain amount of lost motion. Otherwise, it would blow apart when it's running. And so the main, the, the main numbers in the AB equals CD is 382 and 618. Sometimes the 382 will be violated and it'll be around the six, around the 50%. Sometimes it'll, it'll get to the, to the, to the 618, but it gets violated a little bit and gets down into the 786. But and so when, when in hindsight, when the, when the market starts to do some things here, um, you, you can, your, your legitimate thunderbolt is right here. And notice how the D target hits right there at the high. Notice, and so the, what I'm going to be teaching my clients, and they're not going to do this, but they need to understand what I'm doing. A, B, C, D basically does, does this. It um, makes a one-to-one -one move, which is same as 100% to here. That's the first part of it. And, but the D 
tar target can extend to 127 extension or 1618 extension. The range that came off of the AB equals CD, that range can expand upward and ex the range expand upward to 127 or 1.618. The strongest tradable points as I see it in, in watching the markets and trying to study it is when the D target coincides with an expansion of the range. And so you'll notice then um, that, this, that this one here, if I expand it out, to, um, and I set, we set all of this stuff up on your, on your formation tools um, last time, we spent a lot of time getting them to do this. Um, and so the most tradable numbers then off of this, and we're gonna, and I call this a setup. So whenever you get to your C, your C is a setup because it doesn't exceed A. And it's a setup because it's to the 618 and sometimes it's the 786, but this range is gonna hold it or this range is generally gonna hold it. Um, and we got it going here. And so your one-to-one -one move, measured move is right here. It lines up relatively close to this expansion of the range at 127. And if you extend this D to 127% right here, it extends up to the expansion number at 618, 1.618. And that's your, that's the, the, that's how you begin to trade as I see it off from the A, B equals C, D. Now, if we go backwards here and, and, and look at, and why Larry has you drawing triangles is because he's wanting you to figure out and find these points. And you'll also notice triangles here, here and here. And so if you use the same rules, that if this is A and this is B, and B cannot, or C cannot exceed A, you have another potential triangle right here. Or you have another A, B, C, D, which Ensign is, pretty, is kind of fussy when you've got it doing the magnet. And I, and I wouldn't be without the magnet. But notice how it lie the a this smaller triangle, and so the triangles. He's just helping you try to find the a b c d's, um, and then eliminating the ones that aren't that important. So here's the one to one move here. If we expand this um, out to here, we get it targeting here, and the market reverses. And if you, and so we take, if we take off those two, because it got to the 382, this move got to the 382, and this could have been A, B, C, and D higher, but it failed. And how did it fail? Well, if you come back and look at this triangle that Larry's having you draw in and using the Fibonacci in relationship to the triangle that you would draw here and up to there and over to there, the connecting those dots here, you'll notice that if this is if this is A, B, and we and or if this is A, B, and this is C, and we're expecting the market to go higher here, is that idea fails because it can't get above the 786. And as a result, then, when it starts to show signs of failing there, you actually have another A, B, C, D right there. And as soon as this bottom comes out, this target would take you down to this level. But and, and, and so when it takes this low out, we'd really expect a greater penetration than this number because it's taking out the previous low and the 618. 
or the, uh, the uh, taking out the previous low that held at the 382. And if you expand that range down to 127, we really wouldn't expect it to exceed, to get below this low and stop here, but it might stop when this range expands to here, and it also coincides with the 618 over to this low. And so if we take this ABC and run it out a little bit further, Notice that it goes actually down below the 618, but there's the low that crude oil stopped at. And now, you, and so what happens now is because you hit the 618 relative to this low, because on a minor time frame you targeted to use your terms when the market hits something that you're looking for, it targeted right there at an ABC one, uh, 618 extension of that line, you've got a potential turn in the crude oil. Yeah. Now, listening to what I just said, what do you not understand about that? Um, I understand going back to his floor trader handbook video and where the guy shows you the sine waves in the two different time frames. I feel like feel like that's a, an anom uh, um, analogous to that that uh, that discussion. Do you recall? I'm I see no correlation at all. Well, this is this is two different time frames. Under, I don't understand what you're meaning by this is two different time frames. Um, we're we're looking at one chart, the I, eight hour chart, and we're looking at the market over that time frame, and we've gone to no other chart. We're applying the ABCD principles at the four at the eight hour chart. That's all we're doing. There's no other chart involved. Okay, so maybe if I restate it, uh, I'm trying to answer your question, what I understand and what I don't understand. I, I, I generally believe I understand it and that the, the two thunderbolts are both valid. They're just um, inside of the, one is inside the other. So if you listen once in a while, um, so so going back to his, going back to um, going back to the handbook, there's a there's a terminology that applies here. Okay, there's a terminology that applies here um, when um, when he let's let's remove this one, right? And 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 so. What the, the analogy that I can take from that, from that handbook is when he talks about an ABCD nested inside of a larger ABCD. That's what I, that's exactly what I was trying to say a while ago. You used the word nested and it just rang a bell. I understand. Yep. Now what, Approximately what chapter or what page are we talking about in the handbook? I have no idea because I haven't looked, I haven't gone to the book. All I've done is looked at the video and I just started analyzing the market based upon, um, I grew, I, I'm going to say in the, in the market, in analyzing markets, I grew up on retracement levels from GAN and I grew up on the, the GAN angles and that's all I ever had. And so that's what I fall back to. Right. And that's and what so you understand. the one thing that 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 I have a question. That, OK. You mentioned the video. I'm talking about the floor trader handbook video. Is there also a video on the trade what you see book? No. OK, you're talking about the FTH. Yeah. OK. All I've done is looked at that video. All right. I haven't gone to the, the page, uh, gone to the book. Because as far as I'm concerned, uh, Larry also keeps about keeps 
conversationally talking about keeping it simple. Yes. And you can't get any more simple than this. You just can't get any more simple. And so let me help you with what I'm trying to say. Um, you, you just can't get any more simple than this because I'm going to pop up a uh, I'm going to I'm going to pop up a uh, a uh, a slide presentation that I've started on to teach my clients. Okay, and um, in the process of of doing that, it's 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 the the this is. As far as I'm concerned, Larry keeps talking about A, B, C equals D is all I need. And the 382 and the 618 and the 786, it's all I need. Don't need anything more. And, and, and that's, this is what I'm trying to, um, trying to help you grasp. And my farmers are, are I, I've, I've presented this to one farmer and he's already getting it. Now he doesn't, he's not, in, he's not interested in, in getting ensign or not interested in being able to do it, but he's interested in understanding. And now all of a sudden he can pick out the potential ABCDs. And so, so what we're trying to do is we're just trying to profit from pattern recognition. And if I can, if I can profit from pattern recognition, I don't really need any more. That's right. All right. So, so along this line, then, um, I need to, uh, I need to get out of this, and I need to just flip to where I wanna, I wanna get to next. Okay. And here's where I wanna get to next. So when we're talking about pattern targets and trading a pattern, it's what we're gonna look at is AB equals CD. And those are the dots on the, on the chart. It's just that we don't have any chart filling in those dots yet. And so what we're talking about is identifying when the market starts moving up from anything that looks like a low, it's going to go until it stops. And now we have two dots on the chart, A and B. And we have a distance that we're talking about right here, a distance, that number. And then the market is going to make a correction to C. And, and then this number, or this number right here, that's off of here, this number, applied to C becomes the D target. And that's all we need to know. And once we know that, then when we start looking at the move from A to B, and we start saying that, that C is going to become a C target when there's no violation of A. If A gets violated, you have no pattern and you throw and you look for the next pattern. But most of the time, C is not going to violate A if A also happened to be a D target and a potential support point on the way on the way the, when the market was coming down. If do that was mean, a D do you target, mean, do, you mean, do you mean by earlier? Yes, previous on the previous move, we're saying the market has an A low. Okay. And that A low, if you if you go back over here in time and you find patterns, A, B, C, Ds that target right there. And if you go back to the larger ranges and find that that A point is 382 or 618, you've got a strong A candidate. And when the market starts moving up, it makes that A low and a, that potential a low a, a, a greater can, candidate and when it gets high enough that you can actually say wow that market's made a move and then it starts to stall that might become a b target might become a b portion of a b 
And if it starts moving down, we're now expecting the market to, to provide us with a C without violating A. Right. Because you can't have an A, B equals C, D if C violates A. If C violates A, it's, 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 so C, it's a null and void. C has to be somewhere down there at 38 to 618, but not, and, and not be, and, and is violated if it goes to 786. If it goes through 786, it's violated. Yep. Odds are it's going to take out A. If six, if C at six one eight gets violate goes below seven eight six number, odds are it's going to take out a once in a while at double bottoms, and that's okay. But odds are it's going to take out a. Right. So once we take and and find a potential C low because it's a three eight two or a slight variation down to the fifty or a six one eight slight variation down to the 786 and the market starts moving up, whoops, we can now develop a, a D target based upon the AB number that you realize. And, and that is, and if we, and if I, and this is where I'm stopping. I really haven't gone to the floor traders handbook anymore because at this point, I can't, I can't absorb anymore. And, and so this is a one to, this is what you would call a measured, a one-to-one -one measured move or a hundred percent. And the possibility is that it might go more than that. And if it does, it extends to what we're going to call D, you know, D1, yeah. um, which is basically 127% of this range. Or it might go to an additional extension up to then 161% of this range. And that's all you that's that's what we've got. Now I'm I was I'm 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 wanting to prepare the the next um, the next part of the pattern, and I'll just explain it to you that. This is this range here. We've talked about this low being a 382 or a 618, and we're talking about this D line extending. But if the market takes out this high right here, if the market takes this high out, the, the D line is going, to, the, the, the market is moving beyond B to go to target D. And that's the requirement that once you develop a potential C, B has to get taken out in order to have a legitimate move toward D, one of these D targets. When that D line, when the, the, the line that B comes up and takes out B, the line then is going to continue to extend to one of these targets. But what also happens is this is coming out of a range where the low stopped at 382 or 618. And when the market takes out this B, the, the range is going to expand to 127 or 1.618. Or 1 and when, it, when the D, one of these D targets coincides with an expansion of the range at 127 or at 1.618, there's that that gives you a firm target for the market to to try to get to and you just carry your stops at an appropriate place or you try trading in and out of it whatever you want to do but that's that is the simplicity here of what i was trying to explain right there okay and that's the simplicity without the com the confusion of the numbers And, and Larry, you In other words, got, we're, looking, we're looking at a picture, not arithmetic. That's what that's why it's called pattern. Yeah. But we're the pattern is built on arithmetic. Right. Patterns are built on arithmetic, but if you look at the pattern, 
you don't need to be a mathematician to get the message. Yeah. Okay, but you got it. But but the targets uh, of the pattern, you know, look at what just just looking at what we can see on this chart. And I know the, there's a lot more market data, but look at what happened. You you have an a you have a um, a uh, uh, if I if I remove this one this formation right here, if I remove that one, and we're, we're, <clears throat> we establish A, B, and we're looking for C, this is possible because it's near the 382. This one is, this when, when the market go, you, you might have bought, we might have bought it here, but we should be carrying a break even stop at the minimum, right? Mm -hmm. And when we're stopped out, what do we look for? A new D target. And we're stopped out because we recognize that this high didn't take out seven eight six. And well, so, if we put the if we put the 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 if we put the Fibonacci stuff on this more minor move, and we go back to what I started out with, if this low comes out, we're not going to expect the market to stop at sixty eight dollars, right? Just below it at 68.79. We're probably not even going to expect it to stop at this 67 that we got to right here on this date, because why? It's the 50 percenter. And if you're violating the 382 and then getting to the 50 percent, odds are you're going to go to the 618. And if you start to violate that 618, you, you'll likely go to the 786 and it could turn from that window. But the point that I would, that I would make is when, when you don't expect it to hold 50% in 67.2 and you're expecting it to get to um, the 618 at 6660, an expansion, an extension of this to the 618 extension of that line takes you right below the this. And so as soon as you start seeing this on the 15 and five minute chart, you can do what? Buy it. Buy it based upon your, your right and left hand trade. Yeah. And you, you have a general idea that the market probably would is not gonna exceed 66.35 when you come down through this because the, of the D target. And so if we were, if we looked at the market here this day and said, wow, we held it, but the next day you open here and you start going down, you take that low out, but you notice you're not taking this low out on the 15 minute chart. You probably do the, do the, the Richard Rube um, 15 minute chart, right and left hand trade and buy it. And now you put your stop below that. And you're, which happens to be below this D target, and now you got a trade going. And once that happens, then you have a new, a new legitimate A, B equals C, D. Yeah. Now, when you, you're, I'm, I'm asking, I got a question about, uh, I guess, technique. Or when you go in and take those X's out and make those check marks and uh, move from one, two, three, four, five across the bottom there, uh, that is that changes the dimensions of the ABCD so that you can give further instruction. How do you and that that and that saves in your thing? You, I guess it saves in this. Uh, we, we, I, 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 we, you and I worked on this, being able to do this last week and we saved all of the last time we talked and we saved all of that. Yeah, it's in mine. It's in here somewhere. I don't know how to find it though. So you need to watch some videos on Ensign. Oh yeah, which uh, I don't know. All okay. I can say is go out and try to find some videos on Ensign. Let's see. I'm I'm gonna go there. 
uh, but I, I kind of need to get going, Richard. But but this is this is all this is all I'm gonna I'm not gonna right now I'm not um, I'm not um, I'm not interested in standard deviations and I'm not interested in anything but and that's why on the show all Larry talks about is A B equals C D and the extensions and expansions. Now he does talk about, you know, um, standard deviations in the stock market and things like that, you know, um, when the market is getting really um, um, hyped up, up or down, but otherwise I don't need anything more than this, what I got right now. Got it. And I've, and and so so far, you know, um, uh, so far, um, yeah, you've, you're you're recording this, so I'm not going to put up my trades right now. I've I've made a little money in in hogs and lost a little bit of money, net gain, um, made a little bit in cattle, um, lost a little bit in in cattle, um, have missed a larger move in the cattle. Um, you know, got on board of, of the April cattle um, in here and and took a, a small profit. Met, didn't didn't stay with. Um, I, I wasn't. I, I took a small profit and it's not been able to get back in. But the fact that I understood that the market was going to go from here up to here, and I found the entry point on the April cattle. And when I when I went through what I did with Larry, he said, "Perfect job." Yeah. So I don't know how to um, right now. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm at a bit of a loss on how to help you get beyond where you are um, because you're, um, you know, you, you just can't do this in Ninja Trader. I know, I know, I know. That's why I'm, that is exactly the reason that I'm, I'm putting energy into learning Ensign is because there's things that it offers that Ninja Trader does not. And so, well, and, and so all I can say about that, Larry, is you really need to, um, I can't spend enough time with you. Well, I'm going to watch the videos like you suggested. I know where they're at. They're in here somewhere. Um, and right here, right here. They I, are. And, and there's, I think there's, you know, so when you get to a chart and yeah, I mean, right here is uh Um, well, the videos show up somewhere, and so there's uh 35 of them. Okay, so I think that's what you need to do. I'll do that. You need to spend your time with that. Um, the way you get this background changed is through a template, and I'm not really good at said I got mine. It took me a long time to get this from, from white. I, I wanted it white. Um, I got my candles the way I want it. And I set up a chart template, but I, I figured it out as I went, but I can't go back and tell you how to necessarily do it. Well, so that from Paul or video. Yeah, my, and I'm, I use the video to figure out how to do the template. And I just followed the video step by step on the template and got my template done the way I wanted it. Okay. Well, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to watch these videos. You've given me some great direction, Tim. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're right. welcome. Glad to be of help. Um, you know, um, the, I, I, I be honest with you, I don't use the, the right and left hand trade, um, very much, but, um, I'm, I'm, uh, there's, there's some features of it that I, that I do use. And so the biggest thing is when I get started going down and, and find a retracement level that's of interest. I go down to the 15 minute and the five minute, and I'm not proficient at that yet, but um, I'm, I'm getting there. All right. Thank you. You're welcome.
keep in touch, watch right. the videos, and um, you you'll get it. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Have a good day. See ya. Bye bye. Bye bye.